Hi, I'm Grant, and this is a short video on my recommendations for a good video setup for shooting yourself for YouTube. Firstly, the best video camera setup for shooting yourself for YouTube is generally the one, or it's the old cliche, is the camera that you already have. For example, it might just be an iPhone or an old video camera uh, or a DSLR, a flasher DSLR camera like the one I'm using here. I believe it's more important to get producing rather than sort of stressing or procrastinating on lack of a suitable camera or perhaps the lack of lights or, or good audio setup. And the reason I say this is because I am one of those people that sort of procrastinate because I don't have the right setup. And the best thing to do is actually just to get going and produce content. However, if you feel you need some advice on how to make your YouTube videos look better, then keep watching and these are my recommendations for a good video setup. I was recently approached by a colleague who runs a medical recruitment company and he's been producing some YouTube videos and he approached me because he wanted to make his videos look and sound better. He also wanted um, a, like a, almost a fully auto setup where he could walk in, just turn on the gear and shoot the video or shoot himself um, for his YouTube channel. Here's an example of his existing video recordings. I wanted to make this quick video just sitting here in my office today as I'm about to head off on holiday over Christmas. And here's a test using the setup that I recommended for him. Hi, I'm Sam Hayes today and at Metacrit we believe that anything's possible, that any individual and organisation can be exceptional and that exceptional people change the world. Before I get into the technical section of this, here are my assumptions that I'm assuming that you're watching this video for. You are wanting to produce better looking videos for YouTube and it's, you'll probably be in a situation where you're shooting yourself as I am now with no other camera people. You want them to sound better or better audio and you wish to do it in as easy or an automated way as possible. So what did I recommend for my colleague? Here's the gear I recommended for his video situation setup and I've put the links uh, below this in the video description to the, to the exact gear that I used. In his situation I recommended the Canon 70D with the 18 to 135 kit lens, a tripod obviously, the Rode VideoMic Pro and an extension cable, two times LED panel lights. These were dimmable and they were daylight balanced. You could however of course shoot this as equally well with your humble iPhone but the reason I recommended the Canon 70D is that it has a very pleasing picture. Canon has quite nice skin tones even for someone like me. It has a swiveling LCD viewfinder which is essential if you're shooting yourself and you don't have any other camera operators. It has a mic in jack for attaching external microphones. It is one of the first good DSLRs that can shoot video with a good autofocus system. It has a face tracking technology which is actually, you can actually set it with confidence that you can sit down and it is pretty much going to do a good job of tracking focus for you. This is how I set up the Canon 70D and if you have a different brand or type of camera you can probably do what I'm doing anyway. Right, turn the camera on and go to menu, scroll along and I record it in Full HD in IPB mode. IPB mode uses less disk space um, with no real noticeable loss in quality. If you're going to edit, if you're doing shooting something for post-production or editing, you want top quality, then shoot in all eye mode. So we'll go IPB. Turn your top dial to the P mode, not fully auto, but the P mode. This enables you to still use a, um, a specified picture style. Go to picture style. Now um, it will probably come out of the box in auto. Scroll down to neutral. I tweak this a little bit by adding a little bit of sharpness. So to go to click on the info detail and click on sharpness and it will be defaulting there. I add two notches of sharpness. Right, yo, go back to the menu. Go across until you see the sound recording. Scroll down to sound recording and we're going to put that in auto, scroll down to the wind filter attenuator and you are going to enable the attenuator. If you're after better quality audio you can actually use the manual audio settings once you get used to them for recording a constant level but to get yourself going and get yourself out of the blocks use the auto mode. So scroll back here to the white balance screen and go into white balance and select auto white balance. This generally does a pretty good job. Next up, focus tracking. Scroll across to you see the AF method, enter the AF method, and we're gonna put on the little smiley face plus tracking. 
Make sure you have your focus tracking system switched to autofocus on your lens barrel and the lens stabilizer on. If you're having trouble following me along then or want more explanation, go through to my website and you'll see a more detailed explanation of setting up this camera to shoot video. Right, in terms of the physical room setup, I thought I'd illustrate it uh, would be easier for me to show on paper than trying to find a big room to set it all up in. And please bear with me with my drawing skills. For my first tip for the space where you're shooting yourself, bigger is better. Um, and that is mainly so you don't want to be shooting yourself sitting against a wall and it's also going to be better for your audio, audio where you don't have the, the sound bouncing off hard surfaces because when you're in a small room the sound echoes badly. Even this will be echoing off the desk. A good rule of thumb is set your tripod to eye height. Even slightly up actually, you don't really want it shooting down, you don't want it shooting up because that is not flattering. The most flattering is generally at eye height or maybe slightly above eye height. Radio, audio. The golden rule for audio is that you want to get your microphone as close as possible to the audio source, and the audio source is obviously you. So you want to get this microphone, if you can, off the camera like you can with this Canon 70D by using the extension cable which I mentioned earlier. And that way you can actually take the microphone off the camera and come and put it perhaps just out of sight of the picture next to you. So rather than sitting away away in the camera, see if you can get this microphone as close as possible to you. If you're absolutely stuck in a very small space, you might want to try looking at getting a lapel mic. Lighting is very much a personal choice and I strongly recommend investing in some form of lights. I recommended those LED panel lights and you kind of want two as a minimum. You can get away with one, two is, a, two is good, three is even better. The setup I used with the medical recruitment guy at the start of this video was a setup like this. So the setup I used with the medical recruitment guy at the start is he, this is, this is uh, Sam who was standing here. I had the camera in front and I just had the two lights either side of him and the wall was way back here. So we had the camera shooting here, I had one light here, one light here, and we also had the microphone off and duct taped to a pole right here. Audio, light, light, camera. And that's it, that's my recommendations for improving the quality of your YouTube videos with as little fuss and technical knowledge or know-how as possible. If you have a Canon 70D or are thinking of getting one, I've got a link below this video here um, to my website where I have a course on learning to shoot or setting up the Canon 70D to shoot video. I hope that helps and thanks for watching.